Wow. What a crazy 11 week ride we have been on together as a church. Uh, it's a season that we're never going to forget. And I know that there were lots of highs. I know there were lots of lows. I want to begin this video by just praising God for all the amazing things that he has done. There are so many people that in the midst of the confusion of this and the frustration of this, they saw God do amazing things in their family. They saw God do amazing things in their own discipleship. And so uh, praise God for what he has done and praise God because starting this Sunday, we get to transition back. We get to start making that move to regather together again as a congregation in our building. Um, I'm not even sure how to prepare my heart for Sunday because I know the emotions are just going to be overwhelming, but I do know it is going to be so good. I have a lot to communicate with you in this video. I'm going to do my best to communicate it as clearly as I can. Uh, the nice thing about a video is if you have any confusion, go ahead and rewind or, or go back and watch it again. Uh, hopefully that will clarify any questions that you might have. The key for us as we begin to gather uh, is, is the word responsibility. The decision to come back and worship in our building or the decision to stay home for a few more weeks or maybe even a few months and, and worship with us online it is your decision to make 100%. It's completely up to you. If you're not comfortable returning yet, if your health dictates that you shouldn't come back yet, we don't want you to feel bad. We don't want you to feel like you're letting us down. We don't want you to feel guilty. We don't want you to feel any of those things whatsoever. We totally understand that there are many, many people who might have that situation where it's not safe for them to come back or they're not ready to come back yet. Um, we're going to be doing a live stream of our service at the nine o'clock service. And so you can tune in and watch church live with us. That's also being recorded. And then you can watch it any other time of the day if you don't catch the 9 a.m. Um, we respect and honor your decision to wait a little bit longer before coming back into the crowds and, and all of that. We're not going to have kids ministry this Sunday, although we hope to get that going in the next couple of weeks. Um, during this season, if you've got a bunch of little kids and it would be better for you guys and, and your family, or maybe to continue some of the momentum you have as a family, to stay home and watch the service together, we support that. Great. Either way, if you feel called to come or stay, we totally support you. We're not going to be having any youth ministry during our worship services. Again, we hope to have some announcements for you about that in the coming days. Um, we are going to have the nursery open for ages zero to three. So we will have the nursery at all three services. For those of you who are ready, for those of you who feel like it's safe and the time is right for you to regather here, we want to welcome you back. And as I said, we leave the responsibility for that choice completely up to you. I do want to read our, our disclaimer to you here. An inherent risk of exposure to COVID-19 exists in any public place where people are present. COVID-19 is a contagious disease that can lead to severe illness and death. By attending services today, you voluntarily assume all risks related to exposure to COVID-19. Also, if you're sick, if you're showing any symptoms at all, if you've been tested for COVID and you haven't gotten the results back yet, or if you feel like you may have potentially been exposed to COVID-19, we would ask you to refrain from coming back right away, waiting until you get that clean bill of health or you feel like you're out of the woods before you come back. You know, one of the most important commands we have in our faith is to love our neighbors. And so if, if you're experiencing any symptoms or anything that I just described, uh, love us well by being patient and waiting a few more weeks before you make your return. We're gonna be opening our doors on Sunday, but it's not gonna be a completely normal experience. Um, we're trying to transition to normal right now. That's the season that you're gonna find us in as you come back as we are a church uh, that's trying to transition back to normal. We are offering all three of our services at 9, 10.30, and 4.05 in the afternoon. We have plenty of masks if any of you don't have one. Um, we don't require masks, but we honor and respect those who need to be wearing them or choose to be wearing them. We're gonna po politely ask you not to handshake, not to hug. Um, I know many of you have no worries about that whatsoever. And yet there's also a good chunk of our population who have very big worries about that. 
And so in order to just avoid crossing anyone's boundaries, in order for us to love our neighbors well, we're just going to ask that we try to minimize the handshakes and the hugs. And I think something we have to be on the lookout for is if, if there's a brother or a sister here with a mask on, let that just be a symbol to give them as much space as, as, as they would need. So that if they're wearing a mask, they're, they're, they're saying, hey, I would appreciate a, a, a little bit of space here. The coffee station will be closed down this week, and so feel free to bring your own coffee or water. Um, seating at the services is not going to be normal. The front of every section in our worship center is going to have some normal seating in it because we know that there are some large families here who have no trouble sitting close together. We also know there's been some quarantine groups. You can even call them a quarantine family where people have been watching the services together. They've been doing live together. They have no fear in being in close proximity with one another. We want to reserve those sections for people who are safe to gather in that way. Um, as we work our way back through the sanctuary, the rows will then have distancing. And so that's where everybody else can go uh, if you're not sitting with a, with a group or things like that. Uh, we ask that families and large quarantine groups come a little bit early <clears throat> so that we can make sure we get you guys situated and where you need to be for that. As I said, the back portion of our worship center will be spaced out, and that's how we're going to create the social distancing that we need to have. The 405 service typically has extra room. And so if you're concerned at all about trying to maintain a high level of distance, that service will naturally be uh, the best service for you. So keep that in mind. If, if you want to make sure you've got plenty of space, the 405 is the place to be for that. Some of you need a high level of safeguarding and you'd still like to come. And we care about that. So we are going to use the children's room, the big children's room, at the far end of our building to be a, a, a place for people who need to have social distance and who need to be in an environment where everybody is wearing a mask. There is a private door right there for, for you to come in and out that won't be part of the main lobby or anything like that. Um, everyone in that room, in the children's room, will be required to wear a mask. And so if that's what you need to be safe and you still want to come and gather, uh, that's how we want to provide that. We're going to put the service up on the screen for you. And that'll be at both the 9 and the 1030 service. We don't really feel like it'll be necessary at the 405 because of the space that we have for that. In order for us to do this transition well, we're going to need your help. For the first two weeks, at a minimum, the first two weeks, we're going to be using an online reservation system. I'm sorry that we have to do this. I was trying so hard to avoid it. I was hoping we wouldn't need it, uh, but it helps us out tremendously so that we can manage our safety protocol so we don't have too many people in the building at any one time. How do you register? How do you make a reservation? We're going to send a link um, on our email. We're going to send a link through the app, and we're going to post the link via Facebook. All of this will go live tomorrow at 8 a.m. All you have to do is click on that link, pick your service, tell us how many people are coming. There is an attendance cap on all of those services. And so if we happen to, to hit the cap of one of those, it'll close that service. And so if you come into that a little bit later and the service you normally go to is full, it'll still have an option to go to the other two services, one of the other two services that are there. Um, there's no playbook for this. There, there, we didn't really see this coming. When, when we closed our doors and began to do the distancing thing and went completely online, uh, we were just trusting the Lord. And again, we praise Him for what He's done. I want to stay, uh, thank you so much for staying connected with us through our online ministries. That's been a really, really positive thing. And I want to thank you for the grace and the flexibility that you've shown us as well. And I hope you'll continue to show us that grace and flex flexibility as we start to transition back to what we hope will be normal. I'm really, really excited. Be sure tomorrow at 8 a.m. when those reservation systems go live that you reserve your spot at, at the service. If you don't know for sure if you're coming, leave it open so that we don't um, reserve seats that aren't going to be used. I also ask that you would pray for our church during this transition. We need the help of the Lord big time. We need the Holy Spirit's protection and guidance, and we want him to bless our gathering. We want him to be a part of the party that's going to be going on here on Sunday. Of course, please keep praying for all the turmoil 
that's going on in our world. And if you're discouraged or even depressed tonight, just take heart and know that God is on the move, God is working, and he is a God of redemption. So we can see the fallenness of our world right now, but we trust and believe that he is doing amazing things already to redeem and bring healing to our nation. But let's keep praying through that. God bless you all. And whether I see you online or in person here on Sunday, uh, know that you're loved by God and God is going to see his mission fulfilled in Kingman and we get to be a part of it, which is so cool. Thank you so much for listening to this. We'll see you soon.